My name is Sarah Woodbury. I'm here today with my husband Dan to talk about Owain Gwyneth. So why was he called Owain Gwyneth? As readers of my Gareth and Gwen Medieval Mysteries would know, Owain was the king of Gwyneth, and calling him Owain Gwyneth was a way to distinguish him from other Owains of his era. Owain was born the second son of Griffith F. Kinnon, who we've talked about in prior videos, the king of Gwyneth. He and his brother, Cadwashan, followed their father's expansionist agenda, pushing east and south out of Gwyneth to control more territory. His brother, Cadwashan, died in battle in 1132, thus making Owain the Edling, or the heir to the throne. Owain really came into his own in 1136 in a war with the Normans in Dehaibarth. Owain's sister, Gwenllian, was married to the king of Dehaibarth, who came north asking for assistance in this battle. While he was gone, Gwenllian was attacked and captured and hung from the battlements by the Normans. Owain and Cadwallader then immediately marched south, engage the Normans in battle, and win. In the aftermath, Owain annexed Ceredigion, which is a portion of Dehaibarth that includes Everestwith. His father by this time was very old and was not actually participating in any of these battles. And Griffith Atkinen, in fact, died in 1137, making Owain the king of Gwyneth. Owain had the advantage of ruling during a time in England called the Anarchy, when Stephen and Maud, two claimants to the English throne, battled it out. What that meant was nobody in England really had the time or the energy or the money to worry about what was going on in Wales. So Owain took advantage of that and just continued to expand his territories. In 1152, Henry came to the English throne and almost immediately turned his attention to Wales particularly Owain, um, trying to restrict his activities. By 1157, Owain had lost enough battles that he had to sign a treaty restricting his kingdom to the part of Gwyneth that's just west of the Conwy River. Once Henry left, though, Owain went back to doing what he did best, which was expand his territories, such that by 1165, Henry invaded again. This time, however, he invaded from Oswestry, um, marching into the mountains and he Owen defeated him but it was more of the weather and the terrain defeating them anyway henry retreated and by 1167 Owen had regained all of the land he'd lost in the previous decade Owen gwyneth had upwards of 18 sons both legitimate and illegitimate although he had designated his eldest living son howell as his heir to the throne upon Owen's death in 1170 there was conflict over who would rule. Daphne and Rodri, who were the two sons of Christina, Owain's second wife, plotted to take the throne from Howell, to the point that they actually either murdered or exiled all of their brothers by 1174, um, including causing the death of Howell in 1170. They ruled together for a time, and then David actually turned on Rodri and ruled alone up until 1197, when Llewellyn ap Yorworth, the son of one of these brothers that David had killed, overthrew him and took the throne himself. Llewellyn actually became known as Llewellyn Var, one of the greatest rulers of Wales. Next week, we're going to talk more about the conflicts during Owain Gwyneth's reign, particularly focused on Tutil, a castle at Rithlan. If you like this video, click on the playlist or subscribe to my channel. There will be a new video next week. And if you want to check out my books, click on the link to my webpage.